Well, last week the president gave his annual State of the Union address, and while it seems like everyone was in Congress and the president's administration was on the House floor, that's not the case. So who's missing? We get the answer in our monthly segment, View from the Capitol, with Congressman Thaddeus McCotter. Welcome back. Thanks for having me. No problem. Now, I was lucky enough, and um, Brian Vandegraaff, meteorologist represented, in uh, Congress that night to go to the State of the Union. Here is a, the ticket. I just want to show you this. And the thing that I found so interesting about it was, of course, Congressman uh, Giffords coming, Congresswoman Giffords coming in, and that was just an amazing sight to see the response she got. And not watching it on TV, you didn't have the anchor telling you, and here comes the Congresswoman, here comes the First Lady. You had to experience that and watch her realize that they were coming in. It was very genuine to be there. Well, I know. There are times in life when not having an anchor around is a very good thing, where one can interpret what happens for themselves. And to see Representative Giffords come in obviously was very moving. I think that a lot of us understand the tragedy she's gone through and how much courage it takes to transcend it. But what I think is important is for individuals like yourself, sovereign citizens of the United States, to have the opportunity to see that, to see it with their own eyes and know. Uh, that they are the ones who run the government and that they're basically watching a speech of where their servants are going to tell them what they expect to do. It was an amazing night, a real privilege. And, uh, you know, not everybody is there. Something called the designated survivor. Explain what that is. Well, unfortunately, in the dangerous times in which we live, there are people who are designated not to attend the State of the Union in case of uh, the horrific possibility that the membership of the House and the President and the administration could be wiped out. So they choose a member of the Supreme Court, judicial branch, a member from the administration, executive branch, and members from the House, a legislative branch. In this case it was Pat T. Berry for the last two years and I believe you had a chance to talk to Mr. T. Berry. What a roll cue. Thank you Congressman McCotter. You're good at this. Let's take a look. Were you the designated The President of the United States. Yeah! I had never heard about a House member or a, a Senate member uh, having to not be there. Sure. Before 9-11, the role of designated survivor during the State of the Union had always gone to a member of the President's Cabinet. In the event of disaster, that person would form a new federal government. <laughs> But after the 2001 terror attacks, two members of Congress were added to the list. Last year, Republican Congressman Pat T. Berry of Ohio got the call after being recommended by the Speaker. So I asked the Sergeant at Arms, well, can I tell anybody? And, and he said, no. T. Berry couldn't tell his staff and he couldn't tell his hometown media, which posed the biggest problem. All these reporters were, were calling saying, where are you going to sit? Because we had the, the, the Gifford shooting. Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords was shot just two weeks earlier, and Congress decided to show unity that night by sitting with a member from across the aisle. My first thought is, what am I going to tell these people? I'm just skipping out on the State of the Union to go watch the Buckeyes game? It was really surreal, and I'm thinking of Dick Cheney in a bunker somewhere. All that's done uh, to try to protect the place, you just wouldn't ever think that a place like the Capitol or the Pentagon could ever be hit, but then you think, well, you know what, 9-11. It's so amazing how he couldn't tell anybody, and you told me this morning he was the designated survivor again this year. He covered it so well. I feel scammed. Well, a lot of us figure, yes, he's very good at that sort of thing. He's a very crafty individual. Not only does he have a very cool office, but he also has to be very discreet at times. <laughs> All right, give us a, pre a preview of next week's speaking, or next month, speaking of uh, cool offices. Yes, we're going into Representative Colin Peterson's tasty lair to see many of the mementos he's picked up over his years in Congress. It's very good. There's also an instrument which, if any of your viewers can name it, I'd be shocked. We should start some kind of contest. There sh uh, ugly sweaters over. It's time into <laughs> odd instrument contest. Congressman, thank you. It's always a pleasure. We'll thank see you next you. month. And we'll be right back.